I'm Maria Rosa Vaquerizo. I'm the CEO of the Andean American Associations, and it's a pleasure to welcome all of you today to a very interesting program. It's Ecuador's disputed presidential election. It's going to be a crucial conversation with our outstanding panelists. Hernán Pérez Luz, connecting directly from Guayaquil, Ecuador. Martín Payares, directly from Quito, Ecuador. And Kelly Librera, connecting from New York City. The Andean American Associations are the first chambers of commerce for Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, and Venezuela. They were founded in the 20s, 30s, and uh, together we have done about, uh, we have hosted over a thousand programs. Um, so what I would like to do today is uh, to give the, the audience the opportunity to raise questions to our panelists. And if you check uh, the buttons down below, you have a Q&A button and you can send your questions, which will be answered at the moment of uh, the Q&A uh, portion of the program at the end. So uh, make, you know, feel free to send your questions. Uh, we're very happy we have um, over uh, 120 attendees connecting from all over the world. They are uh, uh, connecting from Europe and uh, all South America and the US. So welcome everyone. Um, we just thank you so much for taking time of, and, and joining this program. Uh, we would like to welcome uh, distinguished participants today, including Cynthia Urda Cassis. She's a partner at Sherman and Sterling, and she's an Andean sustaining member. Uh, Michael Stott from the Financial Times, uh, Latin American editor based in London. The Institute of International Finance, Hogan Lovell, uh, Deutsche Bank, Morgan Stanley, Santander, UBS, and Wells Fargo. We have investment firms attending, um, Fitch Ratings, the US Trade Department, universities, MIT, NYU, among other institutions. So welcome all of you today. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Juana Caicedo Selinger, she is the president of the Ecuadorian American Association. So right now I will pass the floor to you, Juana. Thank you, Maria Rosa. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, a welcome for uh, thanks to Hernan Perez Luz and Martin Payares to be with us today. And a special thanks to our moderator, Kelly Librera. I think this is the beginning of a serious of program that we want to have about Ecuador elections. Uh, this is the most important. We know what's going on in the country and we have we are lucky to have very, very distinguished speakers today that know and give us a better feeling uh, of what is going on in Ecuador. Um, I want to introduce uh, Kelly. It is, um, Kelly is a partner of Wisdom and Strong in New York as well as a director of the Ecuadorian American Association. Winston and Stroh has been a supporting member of the Ecuadorian American Association and has hosted many key programs of the Andean American Association over the years. Kelly focused her practice on complex commercial litigation and arbitration. Although uh, she practices out of Winston's New York office, her clients are residents in the United States and in Latin America, and she advises in all matters of international and domestic law. So uh, welcome me uh, to welcome Ke uh, Kelly to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Juana, uh, for that gracious introduction um, and good afternoon to you all. It is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed panel. Today we have with us uh, Hernán Pérez Luz, who is one of Coronel and Perez's co-founders. His experience involves mainly matters of arbitration and investment litigation, contract law, particularly public contracts, mergers and acquisitions, constitutional law, and administrative law. He has represented clients in human rights matters before the Inter-American System of Human Rights and has represented the Republic of Ecuador in diplomatic negotiations. He's been legal advisor to the Attorney General's Office, the President of Ecuador, 
and an alternate delegate in the Constitutional Convention of 1998. Since 2005, Hernan has been a registered arbitrator and is currently a delegate of Ecuador before the Arbitration Commission of the ICC in Paris. Hernan has written extensively on constitutional law and has been one of the leading opinion writers for one of Ecuador's most important newspapers, Universo, for many years. We also have with us today Martin Payares, who is currently the editor and co-founder of the opinion journalism site cuatropelegatos.com. It's a journalistic venture that was born in 2015 during a period in which Ecuadorian journalism was threatened, seriously threatened, by a government that tried to override freedom of expression. Prior to this endeavor, Martin spent 12 years at El Comercio, where he served as the political and digital editor. From 1999 to 2001, he was the political editor at Diario El Universal in Guayaquil. Additionally, he served as a correspondent of the newspaper El Tiempo in Bogota uh, from 1999 to 2003. Martin's journalistic career began at Diario El Hoy in 1986 in Quito. He served as the newspaper's editor until 1999. Martin is also a John S. Knight Foundation and Stanford University Fellow, quite an accomplishment from California. Without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Imran to give us um, his impression of the current events. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction and for the invitation. Uh, well, this is a very interesting subject. Um, uh, most of the things that we are going to say perhaps are especially for the U.S. audience, it's not going to be uh, uh, unusual. We are in the middle of a, an election and we are in the middle of a, a contested election in, 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 some, in some, some ways. To understand what is going on, I think that first of all, we have to make some, some remarks regarding the electoral system in Ecuador. Uh, in this uh, last election, we have uh, 16 candidates. Uh, for the presidential uh, uh, office. Um, and we have a ballotage uh, system, uh, but it's a ballotage uh, with this uh, special, with certain uh, features. One of them, mo the most important, is that you have to uh, to avoid the ballotage. You have to have uh, more than 40% of the valid votes. And the second one has to be uh, less than uh, 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 10%, uh, be, uh, more than 10%. So that that will be the that will be given the first one the 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 the, uh, the office uh, without the ballotage. This is I think that is important because unlike other countries like the U.S., we have now um, after the uh, proclamation of the of the and the announcement, the formal announcement that Mr. Arauz and Mr. Lasso are going to be the contender for the ballotage. Uh, so there is an, a, a period between the first and the second uh, elections that it, it, it is uh, unfortunately it opens sometimes, uh, it has happened this before in the country, a period of certain instability and uncertain because the law obviously gives the, the, the parties, the, the, other, the candidates in general, the right to uh, to, to contest the, the the outcome, the results, and 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 that that brings certain uh, certain doubts about who is the person, who is who are the the candidate finally in, in the in the in the final contest of for the ballotage. Uh, yesterday, uh, as you may perhaps know, Mr. Uh, Perez, uh, who was uh, the third in in, the, in line has uh, filed uh, certain uh, recourses uh, with the council election. Uh, he has, uh, he has uh, challenged around 16,000 uh, records uh, out of 40,000. Uh, he believed that he has been the victim of fraud. Uh, so now we are opening the, 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 the timing for the decision of the of these uh, these records, so far basically the the, the challenge is uh, about the inconsistency. So in the in the system that we have, the 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 the, uh, the poll stations don't count the the votes automatically. They are counted by by hand. 
So at the end of the of the of the day of the, the day of the of the election, uh, a group of people who has been there for for eight, uh, sometimes ten hours, uh, close the polls and start to count numerically and manually the the the, the votes, and then they they send this uh, record to the province capital. Uh, this uh, an, an, an electoral uh, agency of, in, in each of the capital of the provinces. And then they start to count uh, uh, in the system uh, electronically. And then this counting goes to the, to the central uh, council. So the problem sometimes happens that the person who has um, uh, filed the records in the, in the polling station, let's say around six o'clock in the evening, 6.30, Make some mistakes, some mistake in the in the in the addition of the of the votes, and then they, they see this this is called a, a certain inconsistency. Well, it happens sometimes uh, that there are inconsistencies in, in in this in this uh, counting at this level. Uh, uh, this is basically what Mr. Jaco Perez has brought has brought to the attention of the council around sixteen thousand uh, records. Uh, the council has to op check the, the inconsistency, make a certain adjustment. Uh, he, he, they are going to hear the other candidates, they have the delegates in the council, and, 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 and this is an open question uh, what is going to happen. Usually, usually, uh, the difference doesn't make uh, really a, a, big, uh, a big change uh, at the end. Um, I have been in this... Uh, Recounting, well, it's not a recounting, basically the adjustment of the of the records, and because if there is certain inconsistency, not always the inconsistency is in favor of one candidate; it's in favor, perhaps, of other candidates. So it's hard to tell you right now that because Mr. Perez has filed this complaint, he is going to uh, get all the votes that he needs to overcome uh, Mr. Lasso as a as a second contender. So. Perhaps the most likely scenario is that this is going to linger for a while. Uh, this is going to uh, help him to, to be a, a, a strong uh, leader because he's going to hold the attention of the Ecuadorian people and say, well, I told you there are sort of certain inconsistency, but maybe, maybe the consistency, inconsistency no amount to a flow. Because you need to have a really, a, a large uh, uh, difference uh, that makes a, 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 a real a change in the in the outcome. This is something that is going on. The other problem that we have is that uh, uh, he uh, his party filed a complaint with the national court uh, a couple of days ago in order to have the uh, the prosecutor, the general prosecutor. To investigate the, uh, the the electronic system of, of the of the electoral council, uh, the uh, national court allowed uh, give the green light for this uh, for this uh, uh, to this complaint. Uh, 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 so there is a certain question of jurisdiction whether uh, the uh, national court has the jurisdiction to uh, somehow interfere or somehow. Uh, Play a role in this, or there are certain all this uh, challenge uh, or this questioning has to be uh, submitted and resolved uh, within the electoral system, which has a, a special a specialized tribunal for for this kind of matters. So this is open a, 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 a certain tension between the electoral council and the prosecutor uh, general. I don't know how it's going to solve that. Uh, there are versions in favor of one uh, or in favor of the other. So uh, this is a, a unfortunate situation. Part of the problem was that the, the day of the elections, the uh, February 6th, uh, unfortunately at the end of the, of the evening, or more or less closing the, 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 the 10 o'clock in the, in the evening, the the lady who is in charge or the, the, the chairwoman of the council of election uh, announced that Mr. Perez was second in the, in the, in, in the run. Uh, I say unfortunately because uh, he and Mr. Lasso were just very close. So that was a 
too close to call. And in this type of situation, the usual uh, the, the protocol says that you don't have to, as, a, as, a, as an official, you cannot make this type of announcement because that uh, outcome can change very easily. And that's what happened uh, uh, at the two days after uh, the, the, the situation changed and Mr. Lasso uh, uh, got the, the second the second poll. So, but that, that gives the few, no, no, the, the idea that there has been some fraud uh, in to, to, uh, in, against Mr. Perez, uh, and that, that developed in a, in a certain uh, crisis in, here in Ecuador. And this is more or less what happened, what is going on uh, right now in, in, the, in, in the election. But the, the, the official, uh, the official uh, scenario is that the Council of Election uh, make an announcement uh, on Sunday that Mr. Lasso and Mr. Arauz are now the contender for the final uh, uh, con uh, election that is going to be held on, on April. Thank you very much. Um, Martin, can we get your views as well? Hey, um, thank you. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with all you guys and uh, thank you for having me. Um, after hearing um, Hernan, I think I have very few things left to say. Uh, I think he, he, he gave a big, a pretty good picture of what's going on in Ecuador. Um, I have the feeling that um, we've been uh, living on a roller coaster all this last two weeks since election day. Um, and everything, everything began with, uh, with what Hernan just told us that uh, is the moment when the, the electoral body, the, the chairman of the uh, electoral council, uh, Diana Tamaint, that's her name, decided to announce uh, the, um, a quick count of, of, of what happened on the, uh, on the election. And um, she decided to, uh, to say, to, to, to inform that the second place, that means the candidate, candidate that had the right to go to the ballotage was Yaku Perez. I think that moment was, was definitive. It was terrible for, for the country because um, that was the problem was was not Jacob Perez. The problem was that the data was not uh, was not correct. Um, the, the the quick count uh, was announced too early. It, it wasn't finished yet. Um, and what happened? What, what happened with this is that all the people that were working with Jacob Perez, especially the indigenous uh, sector, all these very active and very politically active uh, sector of, of, of our society, the, the indigenous, they they thought that they they were being robbed by by uh, Lasso, by all the establishment. I mean, the the electoral body, etc. etc. Et uh, and, and, and 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 this announcement from the from from the CNA, uh, from the electoral body, fixed this idea of, uh, of winning in, 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 in all these big social sectors. And, 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 and this is a, an, an idea that have become like a sort of a, 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 a dogma, a dogma of, of faith between all these people. Now, all these sectors, all these all these uh, organizations that are, are around Jacob Perez, they think that they've been a victim of a fraud. And that's something that it's gonna be very hard to take them off from their, from, from the, from their minds. Um, what happened now? Um, as Hernan just told us, the final, uh, the final announcement will be that uh, Mr. Perez and Mr. Lasso will be the, the two finalists. But the thing is that Lasso seems to have a very weak position right now. Why? Because um, 
because most of the people who were who voted for Jaco Perez, they uh, they have this feeling of frustration, anger. They feel that they have been uh, they have been cheated. So uh, it seems to be very hard, very difficult for Lasso to to get all the amount of votes that he was supposed to 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 get from from Jaco Perez to beat uh, uh, Arauz. Um, and I was, at the beginning, I, I, I said that this was a, like a roller coaster because there's a lot of emotional up and downs going on right here in Ecuador right now. Uh, I think there's a big portion of the population that are afraid of, um, of having uh, el correísmo again. Correísmo, I mean, with the, all, all the political forces with, uh, with Rafael Correa. Um, his government, uh, was in a in a sense was it was traumatic because it it was an authoritarian and 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 and, uh, and populist uh, kind of government. Uh, he he chased his uh, his uh, people who who, who think uh, differently from from him. He. Well, he, he, it, it was a, a very hard period for, for the opposition and for people who thought different from the, that the regime. So I, I, I feel that there's like a, almost half of the population, maybe a little bit less, who uh, that really thinks that, uh, think that um, having El, Rafael Correa and his political forces again on power, it's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. Especially on a, on on a period where, where you don't ho you don't have all that uh, financial uh, boom that he had on, on the on on the on, on the previous years, thanks to the to the oil prices. Um, uh, I I I agree with uh, with the people who say, who think that it's going to be very hard for Arauz to to hold on power because he's not going to have the money. If he wins, he's he's not going to have all the resources he needs to 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 comply with his his um, offerings, uh, electoral offerings. So um, what we have now, it's a um, it's a country where there's a lot of fears. Uh, there's a terrible crisis, a financial crisis, a sanitarian crisis. A moral crisis as well, um, and, um, and 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 all these forces that um, that are that are with the Correa. I mean, the Correismo. They're taking advantage of this. They they have been very very skillful to 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 manage the idea that uh, the government is is the same thing as Lasso. Uh, so that's 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 counting against Lasso right now. Uh, that's making him his his goal very hard to 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 make. Um, um, Correa has has been very yeah very skillful also for turning things up up down. Now he he has been very successful successful on on. on Fixing this idea that all this judici judicial uh, process that uh, he had and some of, of, of the people who work with him had are just persecutions. I mean, all the scandal with Odebrecht, all the scandal with uh, with uh, of bribery, um, everything right now. It's they're trying to to position this idea that that is everything is just persecution. So they're. They're they're they are very successful on 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 normalizing corruption, you know. Um, there's a lot of people who now I think uh, that's what I, that's my feeling that think that uh, all, all the things that um, Correa and his people did on on, on their government and uh, that one of those things that are, is the reason why Correa is it, it's. Uh, 
It's in Belgium right now and not here. And, and, and uh, Jorge Glass, his vice president, is in jail now. All those things uh, responded for a, 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 a will of, uh, of persecution. Um, so as far as I see, I think Mr. Arauz has the stronger position for, for the, this second election on, on April. Uh, Lasso will have to work a lot. Uh, I think that not everything is lost. Uh, many things can happen from here to April. Um, Lasso might surprise us with something. We don't know. Uh, I don't think it's going to be easy. Anyhow, um, you, you, you may think that he needs a miracle. I, I agree. I agree. But miracles happen sometimes. And um, the feeling that I have right now is that Ecuador is in, a, in such a, a situation like when there's a, there's a, a guy coming with a, with, a, with a gun and it's going to um, it's gonna shoot you and, and, and people don't know if to run away, to protect with something, or just trying to neutralize the, the guy with the, with, with the gun. And the guy with the gun is Arauz. Uh, and um, and uh, yeah, that's the, the, the feeling that I have right now. For people like me, uh, journalists, we, we, we were chased by Correa. He sued me once. Um, it's a... Um, a very complicated situation. Uh, human rights was not an issue that uh, Correa was very aware of. Um, the respect and, and for 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 freedom of expression was was not some was not one of his uh, strong things. Um, so um, we are very worry of what's going on. Um, I think that uh, holding on power is not going to be easy for Arauz. It's not going to be easy for Lasso either if, if, he, if, he, if he make the miracle. Um, so um, there's a lot of uncertainties going on right now. And yeah, that's what I can tell you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, you mentioned earlier, and I think Hernan did as well, that some of the indigenous groups are contesting the, the results. Um, do we think that, that the recount will be possible? Um, and, and, and if, let's say it is possible, do we think that there's any chance that Yaku will be uh, back in contention? I honestly don't think so. Um, as far as I, I, I've seen uh, the, 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 the claims of, uh, of Yaku, they don't seem to be very serious. They don't, they don't seem to be very strong. Uh, the amount of, uh, of votes that they're, re uh, it's not recounting, but it's, well, let's say recounting, it's not, it's not that big as, 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 uh, as he needs to, to overturn uh, the, the, the results. So um, I think that's not gonna happen. Uh, I see it very difficult. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Uh, I, he, he, he never really brought a, a serious, uh, a heavy um, evidence that a, a fraud had been, had been committed, which is also no, no, not very easy to, to do it because the the time limits of the law are, are, are very are very short. Uh, just to avoid this type of situation, that you, you can make uh, contestations and 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 and, 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 and affect the the, the, the the final election. And in terms of those who who did vote for Yaku, who do you anticipate they will vote for, if anyone, uh, in the next round? Well, at the Behind Mr. Perez, there is uh, uh, the, 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 the endorsement of the Pachacutic, which is a, a very interesting uh, uh, mo political movement that uh, is the, uh, out of the indigenous movement. You know? uh, so I would say that is the political expression of this indigenous movement. And they basically are around 10%, 15%, perhaps at most, 
of the vote that Mr. Perez uh, got. So you have uh, you have the rest of the people who vote for Mr. Perez to avoid the maybe tired of the, co the confrontation between Lasso and, and, and Correa. They, they, they look for a third way. Um, Mr. Perez was a very good candidate in a certain way. I mean, uh, brought to the to the table of the discussion issues that um, are very close to the center left, but not with <laughs> with the type of uh, of the type of uh, of regime or ideas that Mr. Correa no, is associated. On the other hand, you have uh, the, even the people who are the hardcore, the hardcore of uh, Mr. Perez, which are, the, as I say, the, the the indigenous movement, you have a problem with them because Mr. Correa was uh, a, a, has a very hard uh, hand against the, the movement. The, he really uh, per persecuted um, most of the leaders and they have a very bad experience with him under, under his regime. He was elected with the support of the, of the indigenous movement, but mm -hmm. In a matter of few months, uh, things turn out against them. So it's very hard to for, for them to forget that. Um, I mean, this is going to be very interesting how the how it's going to happen. No, uh, Lasso needs to obviously. Uh, this is not the first time that this happened to him. No, four years ago, he was uh, the second in the in the final in the final in the in the ballotage. And the difference between him and Mr. Moreno was around 10%, which is more or less the same thing that happened now. It's a 10% or 12% between Mr. Arauz and him. Uh, and in the second, in the ballotage of two or, or four years ago, the Pachacutic, the indigenous movement, went, went uh, supported Mr. Moreno. Uh, then they, they they forget about that and they split, but Mr. Lasso is not the first time that has to confront uh, the Correismo plus the indigenous movement. In this case, in this election, we have a phenomenon also that we have to keep in mind. There are, are at least at least ten percent of the electorate are spread around ten uh, candidates, who in average they got a one percent. At the beginning of my of my presentation, I say that there was a 16 candidates, which is crazy for, for a country like us. Okay, out of these 16 candidates, 10 candidates I got uh, no more than around 1%. Uh, and these are very, you know, very funny guys uh, with ideas, crazy ideas here and there. But basically, everyone knew that this guy went nowhere. But they, uh, they accumulated an, an, a percentage, important percentage, of the of the votes. So where are these mm, where are these voters are going to this? Uh, are they going to go? Uh, this is a one of the questions. So, Mr. Arauz has to make an effort to convince the electorate. He needs twenty percent that he's no Correa. That he's no Correa. He's a new guy that Korea is not going to control the government, which is very hard because in during the first the first round, he ran <laughs> with, a, with a photograph of Korea in, in, his, in, his, uh, in his hands. I mm -hmm. mean, that was very funny to see him around in the meetings and he there a huge poster of, of, of Rafael Correa with him. So it's very hard now to tell everyone that he is not going to be uh, 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 manipulated by, by Korea. On the other hand, Lasso has to make an effort, which is not easy, to uh, this, to to the, somehow to to disallow the stigma that he has that he was a, a banker. This, is, this will be perhaps the first country in the world as we might elect a former banker uh, as, as a president of the of the republic. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has been the target. Uh, you can you can understand. No? This is not really a big deal, but you can understand the, the, the type of thing that he has to, he was, uh, has been saying all this time, no? because he has a bank uh, and so on. And he has to open a little bit more his, um, his uh, ideological platform to incorporate uh, many of the expectations that other candidates uh, brought to the, to the electorate. 
So, so this is both candidates has to make some movements to the center and trying to convince one that he's not going to be a Correa and the other guy is not going to be a, 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 a monster of uh, neoliberal uh, economics. Uh, basically, that is the that is the, 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 the <laughs> where are going to be the movement in the next uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks. Excellent. And and Martin, what would you say the the role of the CNA? Um, what, how are they perceived right now? And do you see a role for them going forward in in this next stage? I think that. Um, the, the the way they have uh, been behaving, not 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 since the election day, but before that, um, created a huge mistrust of people. Um, it's not an, uh, a very reliable body, you know. Uh, there's been a lot of problems there, not from today. Just all these uh, mistrusting. I think it began. Uh, since they were they were placed on on, on, on office, um, this is also this is something that it's also very complex because uh, the, the the grade of uh, of of, of uh, trust that people will have on on, on the election is always going to be low. Um, they they. They are uh, they are in the middle of a lot of scandals and 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 and, and, and this, yeah so um, it's one of the problems we have now. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We have a couple of questions from from the audience, so I'd like to to read a few of them, um, and then I invite Martin and Hernan, uh, whoever would like to answer or both. Um, here's the first question. It seems much of Ecuador wants a return to the free spending Correa populism. How would an Arauz government meet those expectations given the budget constraints Ecuador is still facing given the deficit spending of the Correa government? Um, okay. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, Correa, when he, 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 he got to power on, 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 on the middle of the 2000s, um, he, he took advantage of a, of a wonderful boom of the, of, of the commodities. Um, he had a lot of financial space. And Arauz, it's going to find a, a, a country on a terrible crisis. He's not going to be able to, to comply his, his, all his promises. Um, and he's going to have a lot of trouble doing that. So uh, yeah, I think um, most of the of the campaign from from Arauz was made uh, trying to 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 take uh, um, this idea this idea of of, of this past golden years with Correa, you know, uh, where there was a lot of uh, work and a lot of uh, uh, help from the state and. And uh, a lot of uh, public work and public and, and investment and, and everywhere, uh, but that's not going to happen now. So uh, this idea, this uh, yeah, this idea of these golden years of Korea are not going to they're not going to repeat this this time. I mean, uh, so uh, that's going to make very that's going to make things very hard to arouse if if, if he finally wins. Yes, I agree. And have you all seen any reliable polls about um, the second round that's likely to occur in terms of, of any predictions that are reliable as to who will likely win? It's hard to find a reliable poll. <laughs> <laughs> in if, I, if you see one, tell me. Uh, <laughs> this morning I read someone uh, say that there is 38% uh, with Lasso already. It could be true. It could be true, but uh, it's no. It, it's, it's very early. It's too early. Uh, what I understand that is going to happen is that there are been a lot of people in the sidelines, waiting and waiting and not say I'm decided, waiting for the last uh, week to to make to make up their mind. 
It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a very hard election because it, as, uh, as never before in, in our history, there are two candidates with completely opposite views. I mean, it's hard to find another election where you have such a, a, a contradiction in the, in the agenda of the both candidates. So you have to, it's going to be very hard, very hard for, for both candidates to, to see how they got the, the, again, the, again, the votes in the middle. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Hernan. I think that there's no reliable poll right now in, in, in Ecuador, no, no reliable polls at all. But it's also a matter of time. I think we're very soon to make polls right now. Um, I think, uh, yeah, uh, this is just starting. And, and this is for you, Martin. Uh, what has um, Mr. Arauz said to assure journalists that there will be continued freedom of expression and that the press um, will continue to, um, to be respected should he be elected? Yeah, that, he has to say that because he needs to, to create an, uh, an environment of, 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 of trust and, of, and kindness. And uh, the thing, the problem is that he hasn't, he hasn't uh, made any statement about all the things that happened during the Korea government. Uh, he has not been um, uh, brave in, enough to say, Listen, I, 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 I don't agree with Korea on this, uh, such things. I, 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 let's say the problem with the El Universo, and then and, and 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 knows this pretty well. Uh, he hasn't been able to, to take any distance from Korea for what happened with El Universo. And, and I think that that's, very, that's a very cl clear sign of uh, his real ideology. And Nan, do you do you concur? Yeah, yeah, I concur. I haven't heard anything about the human rights situations, nothing. Uh, basically, his silence uh, uh, with regard to what happened during the Korea uh, period is, is very striking. I mean, it, for them, basically, nothing happened. Everything was fine. Uh, the fact that most of them are now uh, uh, under arrest uh, in sentences, etc., is just a political, were political motivated. Uh, there was no corruption. There was not nothing. I mean, this is something that they, they have to change. Uh, they, I know. I understand. It's not easy for them because either because they don't believe it, or I'm sorry, because they believe it, or because they are afraid of Mr. Correa. But if they don't make a move, uh, they 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 are going to have. They are going to be very hard to find uh, uh, followers in in the enough uh, numbers to to overcome the, the other side. Uh, well, he had visited the, the, the IMF <laughs> in, a, in a very interesting move. Uh, he, at the beginning, seemed that, or he announced that the director general was going to receive him. Then it seemed that the, some, some official uh, uh, got him an, an interview, um, uh, but uh, at the end, he, he has been saying something that, that he is not going to follow the IMF and then on the other side uh, with, uh, with indoors uh, in, a, in a meeting with certain investors has said no, there is room for maneuvering. Uh, Ecuador has a dollarized economy. That is one of the constraints that he has. It's not easy for in a dollarized economy to, 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 to spend more than what you really actually have. So the fear that they have in the community here is the, the entrepreneurs that they, we are going to suffer sort, sort of, of de-dollarization of the economy uh, by very imaginative ways in order to, 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 to create money. I mean, out, out of nothing, you know? this is very dangerous. This question uh, is for you, Hernan. If if Mr. Arauz is elected, can he pardon members of the Correa government who are currently in prison or with arrest warrants and then put them back in government? And this also includes Mr. Correa himself. Well, Arauz, Arauz has said something very interesting. He said that he knows that he cannot over, overrule the, the, the sentence against all these guys. He knows that, the, that this has to be, made, it has to be done by, by, the, by the judges. But he has said something very curious. He said he is certain that he wants, he, he's elected, 
the judges by themselves, they are going to overrule the, all the all the sentences against Mr. Correa and his uh, as in Hawaii. So what we are going to have here is a very subtle uh, pressure on the on the on the judges. Uh, it's going to be very unfortunately. So the judges by themselves are going to discover that the the, the, the rulings were uh, political motivated or uh, there are. It's not easy to, as you know, uh, in any country to overrule a, a sentence, uh, uh, even in criminal sentences, you have to, uh, over, you have to bring uh, certain uh, evidence, uh, material evidence that, that are enough to uh, to uh, to annul a sentence. Ecuadorian law is very strict and very and very close uh, ground, so it's not easy for them. Um, I don't know. It's going to be a, a spectacle of, of how the judges are going to, by themselves, discover that they were wrong, which is not easy, and, and this is going to be a very sad situation. Indeed. Um, Martin, what credibility do you give to reports that the Colombian narco guerrilla group ELN financed, fin uh, provided financing to Mr. Arauz's campaign? And is that not like the financing that Mr. Correa is reported to have received from the, 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 the FARC? For his first election, why would the Colombian narco trafficking uh, guerrillas want to support an Ecuadorian candidate? Well, um, I don't know. I, 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 I um, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if they gave uh, some money for the for the campaign. Um, we haven't seen any evidence of this, any proof of this uh, statement. Uh, it's what uh, Revista Semana from Colombia published about what's, what was on the computer of one of these uh, guerrilla leaders. Um, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, uh, there's a lot of, um, of links between uh, um, this, this lefted, leftist radical uh, movements in, in Colombia with a lot of social movements in, in, in Ecuador that they might be linked with the campaign of, of Arauz. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, uh, we know that uh, at the beginning of the uh, uh, Correa government, there were, there were a lot of, of links between the, the, far, the FARC, uh, the other guerrilla, and, and, and the government of, of Correa. So, um, what, what I really think is that uh, there's a lot of more, I, I, I mean, I, 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 I guess that there's, they're gonna find a lot of more, uh, more uh, substantial things on those computers. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you this, um, during the, 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 all these riots in October, 2019, um, when the when the indigenous people came to uh, to Quito to protest against some uh, economic measures, and, uh, and, and and all the people of a lot of people of Korea tried to make a coup d'état. Um, there were a lot of evidence that some members of the ELN, the the Colombian guerrilla guerrilla, came to Ecuador to work on this this. Uh, uh, coup d'etat, this attempt of, of, of coup d'etat. Um, there were a lot of uh, militias, uh, urban militias in, in, in Quito um, that they have never been seen uh, before in, 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 in Ecuador. Uh, the, 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 the groups who, who overtook the, the oil camps in the, uh, on the Amazon uh, basin in, in, in Ecuador, that was clearly made by people um, related to the uh, LN. So uh, it wouldn't surprise me to, to know that they gave some money. And the, 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 the amount of money they gave, uh, uh, according to the Revista Semana, is, that, is not that much. It's uh, $80,000. 80, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they find more things on those computers. And, and, and those things I think are related to this upheaval in, during the, the October 20, uh, 2019 uh, riots. 
Um, here's another question. Uh, Mr. Arauz will not have an, a majority in Congress. Could that be a check on him and any authoritarian leanings that he may have? Well, it, it depends on what's, go what's going to happen on the assembly once they are uh, on, on, on duty. Um, Arauz can make some uh, some uh, some uh, accords with with the other sectors he can uh, he i mean it wouldn't surprise me if uh, let's say izquierda democrática uh, decides to to back uh, arauz so um, i think arauz he can make a majority uh, with uh, let's say izquierda democrática and some other small uh, polit political parties and uh, have a majority there's a lot of uh, of of, of of um, rumors that uh, Arauz, what, what, what he would do is uh, to make uh, what it's called here in, in, in Spanish. I don't know if there's the name in, in English, maybe Hernan can help me. Muerte Cruzada. It's a system that it's uh, established on the constitution in, 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 in which um, um, they call for a new elections for the assembly. And during six months, I think uh, the president will rule without an assembly. And then there's some new elections and they have to elect a new president and new assembly. Um, there's a lot of people who, who think Arauz is going to make this. Maybe Hernan can explain a little bit more about the Muerte Cruzada. It's like a cross killing. I don't know the name in, 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 in English. Um, uh, so he can, he can have more power. Um, but anyhow, I think um, Arauz can make a majority in, in, in the assembly. It, it depends on how much money he has for the government, how, how, how much money he can spend on, 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 on public spending. And yeah, it's hard to tell. And none, any, any thoughts on the, the cross-killing concept that, uh, that Martin just raised? With the 2008 Constitution, uh, brought this, uh, this, this power to the uh, executive branch to dissolve the, the assembly and call for new elections. But you have to meet certain, certain, certain conditions for that. It's not that easy. Uh, but yeah, I agree that is something that it could happen. Korea many times used that as a threat. Uh, it, it's, it's not a good thing to have this power. Uh, I, I, unfortunately, it was, uh, was installed in the new constitution. Um, so far, nobody has used it, even Korea. It's, I guess, a, a way to threat the, the, the assemblies when they, they are not willing to, to join the, the executive branch. Uh, I think that Arauz will be more comfortable making certain arrangement with, cert with some political parties. However, these arrangements are not going to last that much. I mean, he, he is facing a, an economic crisis, especially because uh, the IMF agreement, uh, the IMF decided to renew or to, um, to evaluate the program, not as usually every three months, but every four months which ha in our case uh, is happens this uh, after the elections, after April. So uh, if there are no agreements, uh, so there should not going to be a dis the, the disimbursement and they are going to face a lot of problems uh, for that reason. So uh, it's going to be hard for, for, for him also to, to work on. And, and what role do you see, if any, um, of the rest of the world in terms of impacting um, the elections in Ecuador? Do you view the United States as having any role in any of this or any other country? Well, yes, there are certain, I think that the elections in Ecuador marks a, a very a very important point from the geopolitical no, side. Uh, you, you have seen the return of the Kirchner's in Argentina after the, the Macri um, interval. Uh, which is similar to the Moreno, no? When uh, things went, went was very, very difficult, Correa just handed the government to Moreno and said, see now the, the, the bad days. Uh, it, that similar happened with, uh, with, with Macri, no? Now, 
and then they return. Uh, happened in Bolivia also um, with different with different um, situations, uh, but in general, that is that will be uh, well. Said. So uh, elections in Ecuador are going to define, uh, for for instance, the influence of Caracas of Maduro is going to increase his. Uh, is, is leadership in in in, in, in Latin America or, or not? I mean, uh, we have election also in Chile coming. Uh, so, uh, yeah, elections in Ecuador is going to be important from the geopolitical uh, side. Well, we're just about um, coming up to five o'clock. Um, so I thought I would open it up both to um, to Martin and Hernan if they have any closing remarks or anything um, if they want to offer their predictions in terms of what might happen over <laughs> for the next few months. It's hard to make predictions, uh, Kelly, <laughs> in this part of the world. Of course. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because it's not, it's not good. I mean, you, you need to have certain, even in the democracy, you know, to have certain, certain degree of certainty about what is going on. No? Uh, mm -hmm. Last events, for instance, the rise in the, in the jail, everything uh, was a disaster in Ecuador. So many people start to suspect that this is also a political motivated, which is, I don't know, I, I, I don't see, but everything can happen in a country where uh, the government has uh, decreased, it's out of the, of the picture, it's not where after it's a vacuum power. Uh, you have two very dif different uh, contenders. Uh, Mr. Correa is now really having uh, his uh, final count because uh, what happened after that, uh, this election is going to determine whether he will be uh, absolved or somehow can live the, uh, in, in peace in Belgium or he is going to have a, a lot of problems, personal problems. Um. I don't, I don't make predictions because always my predictions are wrong. So <laughs> I'd rather not to <laughs> make any prediction. The only thing that I would say is that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of interest uh, behind um, these elections. Um, I mean, a lot of interest from the side of the Correismo. Uh, there's a regional geopolitical uh, interest, very, very strong uh, for for, for, for the Maduro regime, it's very important to have Ecuador uh, in this side of, because Colombia is right in the middle. Uh, you're going to have uh, elections on, in Peru, uh, Chile. So um, there's a lot of people betting here and, 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 and having influence, trying to have influence in, in, in these elections. The, the the Maduro regime, uh, of course, um, all all the all the Russian interests are also uh, having a role in here. So um, yeah, it's gonna be a tough a tough uh, task for 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 Lasso and and yeah. Well, I'd like to personally thank uh, Arnan and Martin for this fascinating discussion. Um, I think we have a, a lot to learn over the next couple of months and we'll all be on the edges of our seats for sure. And we thank you for your insights. Um, Maria Rosa or Juana, did you have something that you wanted to say? I think you're on mute, Maria yeah, Rosa. Okay, yes. Um, thank you, uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, Nana Martin. Excellent explanation of what's going on in the country. I think uh, this is um, help us to understand a little better the situation, and hopefully um, things get uh, clear and, and let's see what happens when the election comes. Um, also, Kelly, thank you very much for moderating this program. Uh, Maria Rosa, I'm also, um, I want to thank the team of the Ecuadorian American Association. Executive Secretary Linda Calvet and the program officer Alexandra Vaquerizo for a key role in organizing this program. And as I said at the beginning of this program, I think this is going to be a series because we need to know what's going to happen after. So we are going to continue uh, in, in these conversations. And then before the election, we, we guess we'll be closer and we'll know a little bit better what's going on. 
and after the election always uh, to see what's happening. Okay, and thank you very much. Maria Rosa. Uh, um, I would also like to thank Hernan and Martin for sharing uh, your expert insights with us today in this changing arena, in this political arena that changes absolutely every day. So we thank you so much for accepting our invitation and also to Kelly for engaging us in this lively Q&A session and this vital topic for Ecuador and the region. As you pointed out, the, the, uh, all the speakers pointed out, it's a very important election for the region. Uh, before closing, I'd just like to um, share with you the calendar of the Andean American Associations. We have uh, on Tuesday, March the 2nd, the Venezuelan American Association will meet with US Ambassador to Venezuela, James Story. And on Thursday, March the 4th, the Peruvian American Association will present an economic and election outlook with the chief economist for Peru of BBA, Hugo Perea and analyst Jose Gonzalez. So thank you very much to each of you for participating in this program and we will keep you posted. Until soon, bye-bye. Thank you all. Adios, gracias. <laughs>